of the tremendously impressive piece of film, music from the album Fish Out of Water. Chris, Chris Squire, you by my side, and by my side right at this moment is Chris Squire and Steve Howe. Welcome to the programme, both of you. And the first thing to do is congratulate you both on two superb albums. I like them both so much. Chris, first of all, how long did it take you to put the album together? Um, well, it was interspersed, as it were, between Yes Tours. Uh, we st I was I was conceived. No, I wasn't conceived. <laughs> I conceived the album, you know, kind of around the end while we were touring last year, and and uh, when we got back, uh, I think last November, I started to think about it seriously. And the funny guy you saw in the film there with the top hat, Andrew, he came along. He's an old friend of mine. He used to play organ in an old band called The Sin. He's been working as an arranger for some time. And uh, he came along and helped me kind of with some ideas that we formulated. And I started recording in March, and then for about a month, and then Yes went on the road in April. So that meant we had to break off a couple of weeks before that, and we toured England. Uh -huh. And then uh, at the end of that, uh, I had about another three weeks, and then we started rehearsing again for the American tour, which we did in the summer. And then when we came home from that, another two weeks, Reading. You know, and then after that, I was free to finish it. I finished it in about October. Mm. Let me pick up a couple of things from the sleeve. The album, my first solo album, was conceived and recorded in Virginia Water Siren at Morgan Studios London during the spring and summer of 1975. Yeah, of Written, arranged, and produced by Chris Squire. So obviously that implies so much freedom. Chris, yeah. how much did, I mean, did you enjoy that freedom related to the situation with the band? Ah, well, that, <coughs> it's a, it's a double-edged sword in a way. You know, I mean, it's fantastic to have, uh, total control over thing and not, you know, really be on there. But at the same time, you know, when you've got that, then it is all on your shoulders and you've got to think about everything, especially when it's your song and you've got to play and you've got to work out how you want the drummer to play and the piano player. And then you've got to go into the control room and do a bit of producing and then a, a bit of paying the bills and, you know, everything yeah, is right. like on you. So, but I mean, I did enjoy it tremendously, the mm. experience of doing it. Because the link with Yes, too, on the album, Chris, is well defined, isn't it? But at the same time, really, there's such a strong, to my ear anyway, American influence, right? Despite the fact you were using British musicians. Yeah. I mean, does that influence represent your ear at home, the stuff that you listen to when you're listening at home? Um, I listen to all kinds of you know, music, nationalities. I mean, I, I have a lot of strange tastes which vary from soul music. I used to like Sly very much, you know, surprisingly enough. And uh, also some of the best songwriters, American songwriters like Paul Simon, Joni Mitchell. I think their influences on me as a writer and other people are influences on me as a player. But uh, nobody's ever mentioned that before about American influence, but I'll think about that one. <laughs> <laughs> There's a link too with your album with Yes, yeah. obviously, Steve. Really, did you have an idea before you went into the studio what shape the album was going to take? Yeah, it had been something that was thrown around, you know, for about a year. And I think I did a uh, session, um, I think it was in March or April of '74, which was a wild session. And at it, I did discuss various things with John, and I'd kind of got the feel for certain numbers that I wanted to do. And John just kind of verified that, really. So that put me in motion to think about arranging it and uh, thinking about how it was really going to take shape as an album as opposed to individual tracks. So I, I just prepared really to do uh, the first track that I did with Griffin. So it was kind of a, a progression really. It took, took, a, took a while to take shape really. Mm. And especially since I did a few tracks just with uh, a drummer, you know, either Bill or Alan, which was uh, a nice experience, but a, you know, a hard way to start you know, putting down tracks. But the link was um, was very very easy to form really because we'd all worked together so much that we could we trusted each other to work apart. Now, because mm -hmm. again, the link really between the two albums is Bill Bruford, too, isn't it? Interestingly enough, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, turns up. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. Because I mean, it, Patrick's the link, Alan, of course, and Bill Bruford. I mean, did you had you formulated the the musicians you were going to use too, Steve, before you um, went into the studio? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, there's. A few times when I called on Patrick on the the night before, when I'd had the feeling I'd, my, my ideas were right, that I should have Patrick there as well. And he obliged fantastically and uh, learnt songs very quickly, which you can do, of course. And we, um, 
you know, I conveyed the arrangement. The real, the real stage you're kind of pr pointing to is really, you know, the, the time when you actually, you know what songs, but the arrangements have got to be uh, really condensed and worked out. And I think that was the, uh, the time when I, um, I thought I wanted others, you know, and I kept thinking, well, can I do it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as Chris said, it's a two-way thing. There's benefits, you know, of making the decisions, and then there's times when you you almost turn around and there's nobody else actually to give you an opinion. So you've got to. Have you been relating a lot in that sense between uh, John's album too, between the mm -hmm. three of you, really, and listening to the things you're doing? Um, at at uh, sort of the rough mix stage, yeah. You know, Chris bought a tape on the tour, and we all did, in fact. Of our yeah, ideas. when we were on the American tour, we played a, a few things, you know, of each other's. To, and uh, you know, gave our little comment, you know, which mm. was all very good and helpful. Mm. It was nice, you know, to know that as a band we were interested in each other's solo projects, mm. which uh, you know is something that we wanted to establish because we did plan to break out a bit this year and try a few different things. Mm. Mm. And uh, you know, we all got behind that. Mm. I wish we weren't, but sadly we're running out of time because really? I wanted to get on to yes, all kinds of things. But yeah. Chris, Steve. Thanks for coming in and see us. Thanks. And really, it's appropriate, too, that we end with music from Steve's album. Two pieces from the LP. The first, film with Steve along with Patrick Moraz, and this is the title track called Beginnings.
we've just been chatting too while we've been watching that film and there is a possibility of uh, towards the end of next year anyway a kind of five day yes proms venue is completely uncertain but the idea being that each of the albums are featured on separate nights and yeah right and the possibility of yes coming together towards the end to solidify anything it's a thought anyway and i just wanted to communicate that to you steve howe on film there with patrick moraz and music from beginnings but next week now, I'll be here along with the Straubs and Ace, both in the studio, and the programme starts next Tuesday at 10.35. That said, let's end tonight with more from Steve Selfie and a track called Break Away From It All. See you next Tuesday. Until then, good night.